going to start recording. Okay. It's about time we do another release here, get all your guys' stuff in a released version. That will be fun. Okay, man, we're going to have a lot. Of, there's a lot of good stuff in this release. You guys did some great work. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, okay. So you did the rebase on the perimeter stuff. So I'm excited about that. Um, okay, great. Force pushed. Perfect, perfect. Rebase and merge. Uh, so I found out some, some wonderful news. Um, not, but the, uh, <laughs> the console test based test cases are not reporting failure codes. Um, so there's a bunch of documentation tests that are not actually passing. Um, and I have no idea when they started failing because they've been reporting green check mark for a long time. So, uh, the tutorials, uh, thing. So let me just share my screen. What's happening? So how did you know that they aren't working? <laughs> I clicked on, oh, oh, I, I found out, I found out because I looked at, let me just pop it open here. What, what is going on with my mouse cursor? Well, you guys will see exactly what I'm so confused about in a second. Look at this. Why is it like this? It's stuck like this. It's like I have pressed the middle mouse button or something. Weird. Okay. Um, not important. All right, so I just got that. Okay, so yeah, these guys failing. Um, well, not all of them, hopefully. I mean, that would be really bad. Um, I really hope that's not the case. So I noticed this. Um, samples. Oh, I noticed, wait. I noticed this when I saw the change to this file. Um, because I saw that we had changed the accuracy function call to accept a feature. Um, so good job catching this now, however, we, we didn't catch this. We didn't catch the need to change this file when we implemented scores. Um, so that set off a red flag because I was like, wait a minute, there's no scorer involved in this accuracy command. So lo and behold, um, that test is failing, um, because this somehow, I think whatever's going on here, let's see, whatever's going on here, it's not. This isn't returning an error code, um, so the test is 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 it's 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 it's, um, it's failing, but it should it shouldn't be. So if we run it, CI run console test test CI run console test. And I'm here thinking, why did I not notice? <laughs> yeah, right. And I think I noticed also the sort complex complex source tutorial is uh, confused about not having AIO SQL Lite. I haven't even looked at the other ones. I'm like, oh god. Um, so just something to be aware of. Um, oh god, what's happening here? Okay, the whole thing is a mess. Um, Okay, this is just running on my system is failing different reasons, but um, that's a Python 2 issue. But if you look at the CI logs here, you'll see a uh, lovely stack trace. Um, not so lovely stack trace. Um, so, so on. Yeah, so somehow it's checking for coroutines not being awaited, but it's not checking for errors in the logs. And 
it's mad because, uh, you know, it's not getting an accuracy score and then, uh, well, yeah, it's not getting an accuracy score, but we should have an accuracy score is the second argument there. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, I ran it into a this as well, when, but I like checked someone updated it, so. Oh, yeah. Run console test. So where's run console test? It looks like, oh, yeah, look at that. We never checked the error code. Um, well, that would, uh, you know, that would be problematic, wouldn't it? Um, <laughs> okay, let's see. So, you know, I think we just need to do a set O pipe fail on this guy. Uh, where's run plugin? Run plugin does test no skips. Now I'm like, well, we know this. Do we know this fails? Um, if we run test no skips, test no skips does. Maybe we just need to be using test no skips here. So one thing I also notice as I'm running a lot of local tests lately is that uh, the no notebook related tests take a lot of time to execute. Yeah, we need to move those out into uh, something instead else. Instead of moving, there is a much better way, maybe much better, not much better. I just have an idea. And yeah. Head. Like, uh, after all, uh, IPYNB files are actually JSON files, mm -hmm. and uh, we have clear structure for it, mm -hmm. like what is the input and what should be the output. So it could be very much executed like our doc tests, like we do our doc string mm -hmm. test and stuff. So writing a simple script to do that would like just eliminate the need to start a kernel and do all the stuff that we need to. Yeah. Um, I mean, my understanding though is that that's the whole, like, I, I, that, that was, that was my initial thought as well. But the test book thing seems to take care of it. I don't know if it's the test book aspect that is the long part of this, or if it's the, um, or if it's just the test content. You know, um, do we know? <laughs> In case it is test cont content, then it wouldn't much help much. I thought it might be because we are like starting three, four kernels for other different notebooks and might be slowing it down. I think I think it may be because we're doing uh, we're we're doing the download. I think we need to we're calling cache download, but I don't know if we're actually caching the download. I think it's actually going into a temporary directory. Am I right, Hashim, or is there? I think I think the major factor in those test case uh, timings is uh, the transfer learning notebook. Transfer learning. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if we can mock the calls somehow. Um, or well, I'm see the thing is. I'm not entirely sure about the cache download as well, but uh, I think uh, the most of the time goes to transfer learning. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um, One another quick question I have that is: Is there some command through which we can execute all the doc-related tests, like uh, all the tests that are in the documents, uh, documentation stuff could be tested directly? No, I don't think there is. So we had that the consult. So I don't think that you can. So the idea was to sort of try to keep the, the documentation as separate as possible so that the main test suite is not slowed down by the document tests. Um, now, you know, the, the result is I don't think we have a, a, a one way to execute all the, the doc tests. Um, I think, actually, you know, I think if you ran, let's see, we have the console tests. So all the doc tests would be, you mean the console tests or... Um, and the IPython notebooks, or even if like those non-IPython notebook ones, like the uh, tutorials we have already before the notebooks and stuff, if that would run, that would be easy. Like using yeah. notebooks is easy already. So, but yeah, going ahead and like uh, getting all those scripts to run is like 
we have yeah. to wait on the ci for that and that, that could be done locally much faster right? exactly yeah so you know i think that uh let's let's take a look at tests here so uh well test docs do we just have okay so i think you know i think we probably should move test um notebooks let's move test notebooks and test doc strings under test docs and then if we executed test test notebooks um, um and then test docs so if we moved it under here um we should be able to just run um unit tests on test.docs and then that would run all the docs um test doc strings so do you would you say that you'd like the doc strings in there or should we move to, should we keep the doc strings with the main i think we should keep the doc strings with the with the rest of the tests yes it is running already in that test so, so yeah. there's no need to move it i think yeah i think doc strings probably stays there so let's put notebooks under test docs so now if we have does this look good? So basically, all the the console tests for all of the um, all of the uh, um, so if you did run console tests equals one, and then you did Python dash m unit test, and actually let's do tests. Uh, t or I think doc test notebooks might have a um a reference to yeah it does a good appearance one okay that should fix that now um okay i think that'll be good so or well let's see wait test path what are we using test pass for notebook data path yeah okay i think this is fine um That'll that'll replicate the existing functionality. So if we did run console tests and then unit test. Uh, can we do a dry run here to see which ones would be run? Isn't there a dry run option? Uh, I thought there was a dry run option with dash n. Maybe that's pi test. Okay, um, the and then test.docs. Test.docs or test.docs. Shouldn't that do it? I thought that would do, maybe it won't execute at the module level. So maybe if we said test slash docs and we did discover this should be should be very feasible okay i think this is probably the command that we want so we should document this um yeah i think this will run all the docs so then the question is um let's see how do we make it so that doesn't get run okay so we already have the run console console tests environment variables I think my system is all screwed up here um, let's just make sure this uh, output is correct ensemble okay so then we get the notebooks okay I think this is what we want here um, okay I think this this is your command here, um, and then you have the notebooks too. Does that is that what you're looking for? Yes, exactly. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and, and push this on up then, um, and let's document this. Docs contributing docs. Okay. Um, samples. Example test doc tests. Okay, to run all the examples. Okay, test doc strings. 
it's this maybe this is better suited under testing so do we have a testing area so let's see yeah so run all the tests run a specific test writing tests I need CI tests locally which is kind of probably not what it should be right now so um, and then the documentation So, so, okay, let's see. So, and maybe, okay, so Python M unit test discovery dash V test docs. So, Run console test. Now, run console test is not really the best word for this. So, test documentation. Test docs. Would that be would that be more user friendly? Mm, yes, sounds okay. good. All right, and then we'll make sure that the notebooks. Okay, so then, then what we'll do is we'll make sure that the notebooks also um, okay the notebooks so the notebooks ideally we will get them under their own test targets um, I wonder um, let's see I don't it, yeah the thing about that is it would be great if we could just speed it up somehow so what what is making it so take so long with the transfer learning? Is it just training all the models? Yeah. Okay. Would it be faster if we reduce the data set size? Uh, yeah, probably. Okay. Because I'm thinking... Let's see. Yeah, I'm thinking because this would be nice. It, it's it's nice to have these tight feedback loops. Um, now most of those tutorials are are long, anyways. Um, you know, all the all the console test ones are going to be that's that's no short feedback loop there. So, uh, but there's one thing that uh, if we reduce the data set, uh, the the output won't be any pretty. Mm -hmm. Like we're showing uh, the images and their labels. Oh no, I just mean for testing. So not okay, not right. not in the notebook itself. If we could somehow you know cut the file short while we're testing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Hmm. <laughs> we can figure that out at a different time. Um. We need to. We I, do. We have an open issue. For, I think we have an open issue for that, right? Can somebody check? Mm, yes, we, yes, we have button notebooks. Okay, great. Let's. Uh, um. Uh, run constants. All right, so we're just going to replace this everywhere. Um, Okay, so one console test turned into test docs. Okay, I think this is what we want here, right? So test docs, let's make sure that this, I think that's right, yeah. My system is completely screwed up. Um, yeah, okay, that is what we want. <sighs> Never fails. I have three, I had three dev machines, now I'm down to one. Um, 
and let's see. Okay, so and there they, <laughs> the other ones died. This one's not <laughs> not set up right. Um, okay, so test docs, test docs, test docs. All right, cool. So now all documentation related test cases with the following command. Sweet. Um, I wonder, should we throw the notebooks under that test docs as well? Um, should we, because they could, we could, we could unit test dot skip those. Um, notebook or test docs, test notebooks. Um, Right, because um, if we're making a change here, you know, test that skip if. <clears throat> Should we do that? Because that would make it so that when we run the main test suite, we don't run the notebook tests. Python dash. I think we might want to do that. What do you guys think? Because I've noticed that if the notebook tests are, are, are not, are not um, you know, are slowing us down right now, we want to try to keep that main test suite as tight of a feedback loop as possible. Yes, because CI itself is pretty slow, the machine on it. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And it'll run the, so yeah, it runs. So yeah, because the CI is running the notebook test twice right now um, because it runs once with all the skips allowed and then it runs again with no skips allowed um, because we, we have certain tests that require um, testing integration with plugins. So let's see, what are all these? Okay. Oh, and this is a call out via console test probably. So let's see what do we got here. Okay, none of these take too long at this point. Dang. Well, this is not as fast as it would be nice if it were. Um, has anybody tried running the test suite with PyTest? Wow, this is slow as molasses today. What the hell is going on? This is really slow. While it's executing, I have one more question for today. Yeah. That is like uh, uh, the enter and exit points are to be called from uh, for my project, like in Scikit. Uh, there is a model context and there is um, the model itself, mm -hmm. which inherits from the model class. So uh, generally, we would do file manipulation in the model class itself, but uh, in Scikit, especially, we have uh, uh, saving and loading of stuff done in the context itself as well. So uh, I was a bit confused where I should call the uh, parent class, like model, uh, model base class, and where I. Okay, let's take a look at that now. So move notebooks under. All right, so I'm going to push this up. Um, hopefully the world doesn't break here. Um, I think those were all local issues due to my setup. So, um, so now, um, yeah, now all the notebook tests will be under docs. So let's jump over to our, uh, our meeting minutes doc here, and then I'll write this down. My my network dropped probably. So. Oh, I'm just saying I'm I'm switching to the meeting minutes stock and writing this down. 
March 21st, 2019. Wow, we've been going for a while now. Let's see. Load, load. Okay, my whole computer is slow today. Everything is slow. Um, August 10th. Now it's August 17th. Time flies. Come on. Okay, so well, we're doing that. So let's just do a quick update here. So multi-output. Um, this got merged. Um, merged. Parameter grid. Merged. Um, turning models. Uh, let's see. This is also... Did we... Yeah, we move. We merged this one, yeah. right? Yeah, we just merged this because this was part of the current perimeter grid. Yes. Uh, and perimeter grid. Yeah, merged. Okay. Um, let's see, and then let's do so. I don't know why I decided to make in progress sections last week. That's not how we ever do anything. Okay. So, so cleanup operations. I think we had some minor changes on those. So, Sudhanshu, had you uh, uh, addressed that feedback yet? Uh, yes. Okay. I think there was an issue. Like, not an issue, like a misunderstanding from my okay. side. Let's see. Yeah. So in that, what actually happened is I had actually written uh, two documentations. Oh. One was for the uh, uh, for a regression example for a regression type data set, and another for classification one. But I actually pushed the classification one first. Oh, okay. And then I forgot to push that. So like. Like after you gave the feedback, I was looking where was the regression. Oh, you sample. just hadn't added it. Yep. Oh, okay. So great. I added oh, it well, later on. Fantastic. Yeah, in that example, we are using like two operations in the same way. Oh, okay, sweet. And about this, so there are some features which we don't want to process. Okay. So I did that. Okay. Great. So, okay. So I'm going to have to, okay. So we're going to put this, we're going to say this is going to be reviewed. Um, so, uh, oops, oops, oops. So to review. Okay. So we're just actually, yeah, we'll just leave this like that. Okay. Wow. My, uh, the formatting went out the window here last week, apparently. Sorry guys. Um, I don't know what, what, what I was thinking. Um, wow, and no agenda. Wow. Just terrible. Just terrible shot. Jeez. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I'll do that later. All right. So, um, the 17th. All right. So, cleanup operations. We're going to review those. Uh, merged, merged. Okay, so model archive support. Um, uh, okay, yeah, we figured that out. Okay, we did that stuff last time where we made issues for it, at least, which is figuring it out. At least it says we will figure it out. Model archive support says scikit models. Uh, how? So the question was, um, what what was? Can you rephrase that question for me so I can capture it here? So can, can I share my screen to just give an example? It would be much easier. Yes. So can you see my screen? 
Yes. All right. So we have this scikit model, which actually inherits from model. So it has an A enter and it has an A exit. And they have this file path property, which is like uh, very repetitive everywhere. But I'll come come back to that. Later. Mm -hmm. so, so, so the thing here is like they use this uh, circuit configured location and then this part and then save it on enter and exit. So I will add the uh, super uh, A enter A exit before and after this in the place. But the question is, uh, there are other places where stuff are, stuff is being saved, like in scikit context. In scikit context, they have an A enter where uh, they load stuff and uh, then A exit is in empty here uh, so, uh, and they do save stuff like uh, I'll show it that they do save stuff uh, like here it is loading stuff and in train it will save stuff into the disk like job lib dump mm -hmm. uh, it is dumping the classifier to the file path mm -hmm. so the question is like uh, do I call uh, uh, a enter here at 2 and if yes which A enter should I call? Should I call the A enter of the parent or uh, should I call the A enter of the uh, parent superclass that is like the model based class? So let's see. So is this this context object? Yes, this is uh, context. Like okay, so, context. The, so we should really move. Okay, so we should really move the. Um, that stuff really shouldn't be in the context. It should really be yeah, in the that, parent. That, that, yeah. is, that is the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's take all that stuff, let's take all the saving and loading and put it in the parent. Um, and yeah, any the saving and loading should all be in the parent object. Um, and then it would be like pretty clear, like uh, like this unsupervised one has uh, enter object, uh, uh, enter function, but it probably doesn't have a exit function. Yeah, so I think that, I think that the so the train method in these did a job lib dump, but that job lib dump really should be in the a exit method, right? Um, yes. Yeah. So that stuff should really be. I think you you got the gist of this, right? That was originally yes. not implemented in, in in an ideal fashion, right? This has been a while since we did this stuff, so um, I'm not even sure if we had the double context entry at the time. So. Uh, so we need to so, uh, yes. let's move this uh, to the to the yeah to these classes the main object and this this model name is not being used anywhere so oh again, let's just, just delete it yeah let's just delete it um so, so i just wanted to like take your consent like is it right to just move the stuff there because yeah move it into it the parent been. object you have the right the right idea so let me make a note of that so basically why won't it let me exit full screen there we go because it, it can be done here, but it would be like a lot of, uh, you know, hacky traces. No, yeah, things. we don't want it there. Yeah, we want it in the parent. The context is not really the right place to be saving and loading um, that stuff, right? Because if you think about it, the, the main object, the context entry on the main object, right, should, uh, should set up the object for that. That should be where saving and loading happens, right? And then the, exactly. the context itself right that is for like one usage of the object right yes. um exactly right yeah you see the pattern so and if, so if we have context uh, like uh, io on both the objects then it, it just defeats the purpose of having a double context yeah well it, it's not so much that it defeats defeats the purpose it's that um that it's not organized really the way it should be in this instance right um because if we were doing for example the, the best way, I think, to think about the double context entry is, is for example, like if you have a database and you're doing a transaction on the database, right? So, or if you had a database, this it, it fits really well with the model of open a connection to the database on the on the first context, context entry, and then the context object and it's in the second context entry would be like one transaction to the database, right? Um, so that's that's really kind of kind of the 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 model that 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 we're we're following here. Um, so so in this case, you were exactly right. Um, you know, the we should really be keeping 
you know, the, those A inter methods in the context should be moved to the parent, and that job lib dump stuff should be moved to the A exit method, right? And then there, you're going to naturally call just super, right? And that's, that's, I think, what you were getting at, right? Yes. Yeah, then, yeah, exactly. Because it, that would be all sort of wonky if we were calling parent super <laughs> or the super of the parent, right, <laughs> from within the context. So great. Good, good. You're on the right track there. So mm -hmm. let's see. So for notes here, um, need to move uh, 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 model saving from train method into a exit, a exit of parent uh, and then we need to move a inter to uh, parent or a inter context a inter code really should be in parent um, yeah I think that captures what we talked about here, right? The, 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 we need to save the model. The, the train method shouldn't, shouldn't be saving the model. We should be saving it in the, in the exit. And then the, um, and then the, uh, um, the A enter code should be in the parent, right? Is that, is that accurately capture what we t just talked about? Yes, it does. Okay, great. Um, perfect. Do you have anything else? So while we're on the stuff that you had uh, done, do you have anything else you want to talk about? No. Uh, that's it. Like, I had this question. Okay. Other than that, I'm working on stuff. That's it. Great. Great. Uh, perfect. So how do you feel? Do you feel like you... Um, do you feel like you, I, I think I, I, so I sent you a message last night. Um, did you feel, do you feel like you, you see, do you see what I was talking about? Like, you know, you could push the stuff to the CI and, and then see what things might break here. Uh, yes, I was actually going to do that, but like, uh, if doctors start running locally, I would do it locally quickly. See oh, I see. I see what you're saying. And yeah, so I have sort of uh, streamlined the simple models, so a lot of models would be easier, which are derived from simple model because I have made the SLR stuff work. Mm -hmm. So the simple model, the complete flow of simple model is like in place right now. Perfect. Yeah. See, I'm I'm pretty sure that you're almost done here, um, but that could be one yeah. way to help estimate. Yes. So I was just like. Asking for the worst case scenario there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I think you're good. I, I, I just uh, I was trying to help figure out how we might be able to estimate better. So, so uh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad you feel you feel like you're on a good track here. Then. Yes, I do. Okay, good, good. And if if you if so, if anybody feels like I think we're all almost done here. You know, we're approaching the end of the week, and we're all almost done. But uh, if anybody feels like they have any concerns about anything, you know, you can talk to me offline and we can we can write it down right now. But I want to make sure everybody feels feels good, um, you know, feels good about everything going into the this final week here. So and then the last thing about that as well is um, the final reports. So uh, GitHub.com, um, DFFML, GSOC report. Uh, so this is the way that I was looking. I found our old uh, reports here. So, um, oh, great! All the mentors reports. Um, so this is a good search. Um, this gives you the format. So everybody's pretty much followed that same format. Um, so if you guys, you know, you can, you can, you can copy. I think the the format that we used last year with the executive summary is nice. Um, so, because I don't think Yash did the, yeah, so Yash was our first time around, so he didn't really, we hadn't developed the idea of doing the executive summary. So, the executive summary is basically just, you know, high level, tell me in a couple paragraphs what your project was and why you did it, you know. Because um, at the end of the day, you know, it would be great if this is something that you can translate to like a bullet point item on your resume, right? So if somebody sees your resume and you say, okay, I was doing Google Summer of Code, this is what I did, you know, here's a sentence or two, 
right? And then if they if you link to this and they wanted to read more about it, you know, make sure that this is something. This executive summary just says what what is you know like I think they said you know, what what is what is DFFML? Why did I do this project? You know, what were the things that 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 made a need for this project and then what does this project do for end users right that way people understand you know here's some context around why i did what i did you know here's what i did and here's why it was impactful right um and you guys know this i mean a lot of this is basically you can cut and paste from your, your this this is essentially cut and paste from your the, the final report that you should submit here is basically cut and paste from your proposal to figure out you know you know, that's, that's going to be most of your like text stuff. Right. And then list your PRs, right. List your pull requests and write up that little executive summary. Right. Um, and then, you know, it's really like your work speaks for itself in a, in a lot of ways. Right. So, um, oh yeah. And future work. Um, I don't think this will take you guys very long at all. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, that's that's the plan. So, it, any questions on that? That's pretty clear to us. Okay. So, great. Anything? Anybody else questions? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Uh, will this be hosted on DFFML website, or we have to keep it on our own GitHub site? So, you know, that's actually a really good question. Um, so. That is something that I wanted to do. So this is why I like that markdown. <laughs> um, because, so what we did do is, I think I put the, um, I think I put the GSOC stuff in, ooh, and speaking of, so the final piece of this, right, speaking of GSOC is, we're gonna wrap up all the projects, right? Then we need to make sure that, the, the, we need to fix this thing with the documentation website because we then need to do a release to make sure that all of the guys, all the all the stuff that you guys did is in the released version, right? So that it's not just on the master branch. When people pip install the package, they get it, right? Um, and especially because I think a lot of the work that you guys did this summer, like we've been doing this for three summers now, and we've been building, 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 and I think we're in a very usable place now. I think we've ironed out many of the, many of the things, right? We've got uh, accuracy, we've got pandas, we've got archive storage, um, we've got um, you know all the tutorials with the notebooks. I think we're in a much better place uh, than we were, especially you know after after this last summer really polished off a lot of things that have been building over the previous two summers. Um, so it'll be really good to get a release out there. Um, and what am I looking for? I'm looking for contributing. Um, so Google Summer of Code and 2021. So I wrote up the, the projects here and then what did I do? So I put, I wrote up the projects and then, uh, yeah, I wrote up the projects. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to put did I get, okay, so I put in the contribution last year, I put in the contribution. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to actually replicate those markdown files. So we can put markdown files in the docs, right, obviously. So what I'd like to do is if you guys write those GIS, um, post those on, on, on GitHub GIS, right, so that they're always there, just in case for something, some, some, like something happens to our docs build, right? Um, and then, but we can replicate them and we'll just copy the content into the docs site as well, right? And that way it'll, it can be accessible within the docs site. Because I think all I, we did, oh, last time, oh, this was some, yeah, okay. So last time what I did was I linked to the documentation pages that were the result of the projects. So that, because that was very, I think that's really important, actually. Um, so, because we want, the work that you guys did, we want to make sure that, that, you know, people know how to use it, right? So this last year, what we did was, okay, these are the, this is the, the end user facing documentation that was a result of the work that was done, right? So, um, so, uh, so Sahil, your, your work, 
obviously was the whole point was to be transparent <laughs> um, so that one is a little bit challenging right so I think what we need to do for you is we just need to write up I think we just need to add to an existing right you you changed all the models right and you changed them in a way that was very very purposefully transparent to the user right so that they don't the whole point was that they don't have to see any changes to that but they get the functionality right so we're going to need to add in a section here and there um let's see where would that be a good place so i think perhaps in the quick start even let's see the quick start wherever you think might be a good spot here i would just say um let's see where where would be good maybe usage quick start tutorials models use a model load models dynamically writing a model packaging the model documenting model use a model okay let's put it under let's put it under use a model maybe um and let's just show let's show okay wait a minute okay so this is so for Su Sutanshu and Hashim I, I I know your your stuff is easy I'll pull the tutorials right so write your report I'm going to link to everybody's report I'll copy it into the docs website as well and then you know write your uh write your um yeah write your report i'll copy into the doc site i i'll link the tutorials that you guys made um so but for the location changes since that was transparent let's put it under use a model or let's see maybe let's create just a new tutorial here let's just do it can just be kind of like this load models dynamically right this is a real simple little tutorial here um let's create another page like this and it says you know that can be maybe you know archive or store models in archives or something you know, under models right yeah under models let's do that and and you can use this as a base uh actually let's check out the commit that added this because i believe that there's a specific way that streamlines the doc test log dash p docs tutorials models load okay so this was this commit okay so um, um, oh yeah okay this was it so yeah so you're going to need to add this under um docs test test console test so uh, so make sure you can you can look at this you can look at the video or you could look at the command i just ran which was basically i looked at the changes to that file i determined the commit where it was added and then i looked at the commit and i saw what we did in the commit and so i knew that there was something that was special about it which was basically we aren't doing the whole create a new virtual environment for this thing because it's it's very basic so we don't need to incur the uh, time overhead of the new virtual environment setup so we add it to this no setup array in test console test um, so for this tutorial i would say you should probably just do um let's see where is where is the quick start and let's see just predict predict csv this tutorial needs to be reworked um, because I heard that these were confusing to some people. So, um, those actually confuse people from non-Linux yeah. users. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that I I I me personally, when I wrote this tutorial, I was like, oh, this is great. You know, I can just copy paste this whole block. And then I heard from people that they didn't know what that meant. <laughs> and so we need to change that. Um, I think this is a good one that will fit right into the console test. Uh, this can be refactored to use console test. But, um, anyways, so I would say. You can probably just do a simple Python example, um, and 
uh, set the location of the model to be, um, uh, let's see, what did we do? Tutorials, models. I don't think we train the model with load models dynamically, do we? Oh, no, we do. Yeah, why don't you just sort of copy this format um, and set location to be like a tar gz file or a zip file or something, you know, and use just the basic SLR model. Um, I, I think that's that's probably your best best way to go here. Okay. Um, oh, and it looks like this is sort of a example that also needs to be changed because we really shouldn't be providing more data than we care about here. It might be confusing to people. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, let's do that. So let me make a note of that. Um, so for GSOC, so uh, example report formats, or let me just say report format. And we should also document this report format. Um, this is sort of a side note, so we should document this. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to do is I would like for everybody to present the work that they did in one of these weekly meetings. Um, I think we'll probably run out of time today, but maybe next week or something, um, because then we'll have a recording of it, right? We can clip the recording and you'll essentially have like a talk, you know, um, you know, the little mini talk that you gave on, on your work, right? So somebody can read your report, they can watch your talk, um, and they'll know what you did this summer, right? Um, and so that'll be cool. Uh, and all, you know, all you have to do is really just walk us through what you did, right? Um, which you've been doing the whole time. Um, so report format, we should document this. Okay, so... Uh, so let's make sure that you have, um, let's create docs slash tutorials slash models slash, is that what it's called? Slash, um, um, and uh, just copy. So in documentation, we have a part called publications. And yes. There, there we do have some past GS, GSOC stuff. Yeah. But um, it is like photo. But it is like photo four there. Like it doesn't show. Up. Where? Let's see. So publications. And there's. Just a talk of you yeah. speaking about dependencies and. Oh, uh, this. Oh, why is this not working? Huh. Looks like the slides poster presentation is not found. I wonder if this is because we're on the master of docs. Let's see what happens if we go to the main branch. Yeah, okay, yeah, so it's it's a bug with the master docs. Um yeah, it's a bug with the master branch. Um I wonder what the hell's going on there. Um Oh, that's weird. This should resolve. This should resolve correctly. Okay, well, we can just say that we have a bug there. Um, Yes, not showing. Okay. Um, okay, so then you're gonna create, you're gonna create a little tutorial, just copy the format of this, use SLR model, um, uh, save in .tar.gz format, or zip, whatever, save in. Well, tar.gz sort of shows the compression features, you know. 
Yes, it, it does both of the things. So okay, great. Yeah, so um, just not, not it's just like, I guess, another test case, you know what I mean, since this will be tested as well. Um, I think because the, the console test stuff should pick this up, so. Um, so are we good? Let's see. So let's see. Let's double check on what we talked one, about. One yeah. more thing I wanted to ask was like I have added a archive file in data flow part. So uh, regarding testing that, how shall we test it? Uh, what? So you've added what? Uh, an archive file under the data flows that creates the data flows, that whole code. Oh, yeah. Um, so shall I like... Uh, just compare the created data flows operations and flow with what I expect it to be, but uh, like it's not that straightforward. Yeah, I mean, I would say that you should probably have a unit test for that um, that does that for one type of thing, right? And then you should just run it for all the types that you expect to exist so that you get full coverage. Um, but er, let's see. Um, like to get full coverage, we need to create three different type of scenarios where like something exists, something doesn't exist, and like. Uh, yeah. Mm. Um. The performing oops. actual like what what I was thinking was like I can patch the archive operations and the compression operations, and then do the rest of the stuff because. Uh, that sounds good. Because that is already being tested, right? Patching close would be a safe thing to do. Yeah, that sounds good. I think let's just make sure that we have... Okay, so... Do we know... So, so basically it returns a data flow. That is the whole... Uh, yeah, this is fine. Our data. Yet. Okay, I see now. Okay, so can we just do some kind of permutations of, like, can we just run the data flow? Because shouldn't we be able to generate the permutations of zip.gz, zip.bzip, zip, zip, like, zip, like, zip.bz2, zip.xz, zip.gzip. Should you can use, you know, you can use the product. product. Yeah, exactly. Generate the permutations of possible things and then just zip and unzip or you know archive and unarchive an empty directory and now you should have tested every data flow you know what i mean so the, the, the thing is that like actually we we uh, were a bit reluctant and doing compression and decompression on different platforms as you said it would be difficult to reproduce on different platforms so wait sorry uh, what back when we were actually going to test the archive and stuff uh, so you said that it would be difficult to reproduce in different environments. So we should like refrain from compressing and decompressing in the CI because that would be like also time consuming. Because uh, you know, I don't think it'll take that much time. So where's that one? Didn't didn't we do? Didn't we have a? I think it we didn't actually. We, we didn't actually compress anything. We like batched stuff and made sure that the mock calls were right. Yeah, let's see. Where was that? Okay, yeah, but wasn't there... Wasn't there so no, I, I was just, like, uh, wanted to make sure that, like, we are not doing something. I mean, I think... Let's was... let's shoot for full code coverage, right? I mean, I don't think it should be too hard to just... Um, okay, so... Okay, so... Um... Let's see. Okay, how do we? How would we do this? Like as fast as possible. Um, we can theoretically test all this code. With we should get full coverage if we if we did it for each permutation, right? Are we in agreement on that? With each state. Yes. So, so there are there are two ways. Like we can call create data flow only and use that as an entry point to cover the rest of the code. Or we can separately test each of the function. Uh, 
Okay. Oh. Yeah. See, that's okay. So, so there is, there's, there's one, one of these ways is, is more unit testy than the other, right? But, but we are looking at the towards the end of your week here, and we don't want to give you too much work, right? So we got to balance these two, uh, these two um, concerns, right? So from that standpoint, I think that, um, I think that. So it is like if I test one function, I pass it in the another uh, function if it is called somewhere else. So it would be like a recursive way of like patching stuff and testing stuff altogether. I'm not sure I exactly fully understand what, what you're saying that you're going to do here. So for example, I call one function in another and I uh, like there are two functions. And if Which I test functions? one, uh, for example, like I have that git key sub str function, mm -hmm. sub substring function. If I test that and I pass that function everywhere else, uh, it would be like, okay, it would be okay. Yeah, I mean, that gives you code coverage, right? So, I mean, I think the other thing that needs to happen here is if you just wrote doc test for this like for example let's look at you know git archive type ghpr check out I think that this might be sort of the way to go here. So, what? How? Are we, let's look at how are we going to get coverage here. So, we need to test this. Uh, we need to test this. We need to test this. We're talking about a coverage for archives. So, get operations. So, type deduce archive function. Okay. Create change archive data file. This stuff is very specific and it not sure. Used out outside of this. Yeah, I don't think it warrants having doc strings on it or doc test examples on it because it's so very specific. Um, it's sort of like interior stuff. Um, these guys are a little more generic. Um, these three, so these may be useful other places. Um, so. Let's see, let's see, okay. I think, here's what I'm leaning towards. Um, if you were to create a, um, okay, let's see. if you were to create fake model, so for example, a, a fake model, and you had all the permutations of location formats, so you instantiate this fake model, and it's got basically, you know, a blank train. And uh, a hold up, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. If we uh, implement that example which we were talking about, then it would automatically cover this part. Which example? Uh, the, uh, the using of archive. And, uh, yeah, but it models. doesn't cover every case is the thing, right? That only covers one permutation, right? That's just one. Do You're talking about the tutorial? Yes, I'm talking about tutorial. Yeah, yeah, that's just, I mean, so that would test one permutation, right? So I'm t saying if we get, let's see, is this going to get, so that, because that. Is, it is going to uh, trigger the last one. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh. So that doesn't give us full coverage. Um, and compression type. So we also need the case that. This is compression type is not none, so we need the case that compression type is none. Um, so compression ops, good operations. Yeah, this is nice because you get you get uh, as long as you have compression, you get coverage there. Um, nice. Okay. 
yeah, you get a lot of coverage with just one case with the way that you've written this, which is nice. Um, let's see. And then this one is, okay, so compression op versus no compression op. Create chain data file. Okay. So we need to test the case where there is both compression op and where there is no compression op. And it doesn't matter what the compression op is based on the way that you've written this, we'll get full coverage. Now the one thing is, okay, we need to make sure that we test all of these. I mean, do, oh my God, I need to hate this thing. Okay, so, I mean, it sounds like you've got a plan here. So we can, if you, if you think, do you need, it sounds like you have a plan. Do you feel like you need input, more input on getting more coverage here? Are you happy? Are you happy with what you? So that it plan, is like or? this. This part that you're highlighting currently has like three different pathways, mm -hmm. which are like not going to be covered if we just go with one thing. Mm -hmm. But rest of the part would cover. Like that is the only coverage part that would be left out. I guess. Mm -hmm. Because it depends on the files are existing or not, on a, also on the encoding of the files. So in that case, I would have to write temporary files with a specific encoding so that uh, like I can actually make that thing work. Or I, I can just uh, all the way patch the exist and like those functions, those pathlib functions, which are being used, and then control them, like uh, return false or return true stuff. Yeah, this is where it's like I'm almost I almost think it's just faster to create a um, now I know maybe I didn't maybe I had said something contrary to this but I think maybe it's just faster to create an empty zip file or an empty tar file um, if you're just testing compression and decompression because yeah, yes, that is the simplest way to do it. yeah let's just go with the simplest way I think okay. I can't remember why I had said something about that I think it was, I know I said something about that. Yeah, I know I said something about that. But now I can't remember why I was thinking that. I don't think, I don't think it's as big of a deal. If that's what I was saying, then I don't think it's as big of a deal as I thought it was. Because um, this is not, like, you only need one archive of each type, right? Like, yes. it's not like you need to create a bunch of archives and that takes like two seconds, so. It's like, you know, 0 0.02, 0 0.002 seconds, so it's not a big deal. The only other thing here is that this should probably be a, um, like, return. There's only two types, so it should probably be a Boolean value. Right. Yes, yes, that's, yes. that's probably, that's probably, this is the only comment I had on this, but I was, I was going to just leave it, but now since we're here, so. Um. All right, okay, so do you feel good about this then? Mm, yes, it's perfect. Okay, great. Um, so let's make sure we have, let's, let's make sure we have tests. No, it's, all right, um, all right, so anything else on your end? Mm, nothing, no. Okay, nothing great. Else. So, Hashim, we got everything merged for you, right? Um, do we have anything left um, for your GSOC period here? Um, no, I don't think so. All right. Well, good. Congratulations. So we'll just get your uh, we'll get your report, and then we'll have you you know run us through those notebooks um, next week, unless you want to do it on Friday. Um, so I was planning, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we don't have to have a meeting on Friday. Uh, if we do have to have a meeting on Friday, that's fine. We can also have a meeting on Thursday. Um, so Thursday and Friday, same time slot or uh, an hour earlier. So I'm, 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 I'm free in those areas. Um, so we can meet at those times if need be. The way things are looking, I think we'll be okay. You know, knock on wood. Um, but then it would be great if you guys were around next week um, to do, if you're around next week, we can do um, presentations. My own dog is barking at me. Um, we can do presentations on 
you know what what you've done right it's just like i said so you'll have like sort of a little talk video um yeah. so okay so you're good anything from anything on your end that you'd like to talk about hashim uh no just that about the presentations do we like uh want some visuals or it's just uh, running through the code and stuff? i think we just want just you know you could you could if you would like to i just want to use this as an opportunity for you to have a, a recorded session of you presenting right so you can do whatever you want if you want to come with a presentation great um but i have found personally that um that um like I, th I think that this is this would be a good opportunity, right? Because now you've you've had it. It's an informal setting. If somebody wants to know more about it, you can just point them at the video, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, and you obviously, you know, this is, yeah. So, so this is this is for you, right? So, if if I think that it will be good, and I think it'll be nice because then we'll have. Um, you know, we'll, we need to start growing the videos. We've said this over and over again, um, but it's it's hard to find time to make little videos on things. So using the, the meeting as time to do that, and especially as a way to conclude GSOC, I think will be a good way to do that. Um, so if you want, great, I present work in meeting. Um, if you want to have slides or supplemental, material great if not that's fine too just walk us through what you've done great all right so Okay, so Sudhanshu, do we have anything on your end here? So clean up operations. So you said you added another tutorial or? Yep, another tutorial. Okay, great. So, and this is the, oh yeah, okay. So now I see this is, uh, uh, ha. okay. Standard scaler, principal component analysis, KC house data. Nice. Okay, let's go check out this data set. County, is that where is that? Is that Texas or something? Oh, Seattle. Oh yeah, duh. I should have known that. Um, let's see. ID, date, bedrooms, bathrooms. Waterfront view, condition, grade. Renovated zip code, land, long surface living. Great, perfect. Looks good. Um, okay. Uh, da -da. Oh, I won't render those damn blocks. I put an issue into them. I said, can you please stop failing on unrecognized RST options? Uh, let's see. Get okay, great. Merge command. Let's see what Professor data looks like. Okay. Great. Now we cat it. Uh, another trainer model. So. Great. Training the model. Accuracy. Man, I can't wait for us to get those damn config files. I think that just a little bit of time investment and we'll have that pretty soon here so hey perfect i was going to say this would be good to have as well good job okay so um and what what does the accuracy look like here is it is it how much different is it um uh, actually there's like uh the difference is around like 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 Point two to point three. Well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good difference there. I mean, we're talking out of one, right? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> Important distinction there. <laughs> cool. 
great. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, this looks good. This looks great. Um, entry points. Sweet. Okay, we've got our test case here. And did we... Okay, yes, and we registered these as entry points, DFP process. Okay, so before your project is complete, though, I would... We do need to make sure that we go and we flip this DFP process with the existing DF source because... Uh, Right now, it is very confusing, I would say. I mean, unless unless you would like to dispute that. Yep, we can change that. Okay, great. So let's let's yeah. So before we consider your project done, let's let's make sure that we have renamed. Um, let's do this in a separate separate pull request. So is this one? Let's see. Is this guy passing CI here? I think I think this looks ready to merge. Okay, yeah. And then you did use that guy. So great. Um, so change logs. So okay. So let's let's add to the change log. Um, so add to change add to change log, uh, and then make sure in in PR after this is merged. Um, um, Where's my cursor? Okay. Merged. Um, swap names of DF source and DF preprocess source. And I might suggest that. Yeah, I would I would rename the DF source to like DF old, and then I would rename DF pro preprocess to DF, and then I would um, create another commit where you take DF old and rename it to DF preprocess, and then I would squash all those commits together. That's probably going to be your most safe way of doing this, um, or like you know the way that will keep you sane, because <laughs> there's going to be a lot of code changes there. Um, so let's see. So yeah. Um, okay. So we have to rename right classes as well. Yeah. Uh, so my recommendation is do this in three commits. Uh, first commit, uh, rename uh, df to df old, including. Right, and you know, appropriately, so df to df old. Um, and then uh, second commit, rename uh, df preprocess to df third commit, um, rename uh, df old to df preprocess. Um, squash all commits once CI passes, um, and then push to CI after each commit. Um, so, yeah, if you do it this way, I don't think this should take you more than like 10, 15 minutes here. Um, have you seen, did you see how, did we just do that, get, oh, let's, oh yeah, so this, this is basically how, this is, this is, this is my favorite way of renaming things, so basically, you know, and this is the problem with this is this is going to get you a lot of so 
Yeah, the problem with this is that you're renaming data flow. Okay. Um, well, there's not a lot of tutorials that use the data flow source, so you might have to do it manually. Um, but if you name it, yeah, if you name it DF old, then you can probably start to do this on the other side. But I don't know. This is this is one strategy for renaming. I'm not going to put this under here. I'll just say, um, let's see. I'll just put this here because this is I think this is this can be a useful command. So uh, re named okay so all right okay so is everybody good to go then yes yep all right great yeah. cool all right great job guys um so sweet wow big 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 uh you just did a lot of work this summer, and uh, good job wrapping it up here this week. Uh, and like I said, so keep me in the loop. Let's make sure um, let's make sure that we we finish strong here. I think everybody's on track. I don't think we'll have any issues, but you know, knock on wood. Um, and yeah, cool, great job. Thank you guys. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.